All right, so I noticed that uh, when I took off with this the other day, it kind of chirps and, and high now. It used to um, very rarely, if you were like on a steep hill and wanted to take off, but it's progressively gotten a little bit worse over the past six months. I smoked it about six months ago or, you know, had some smoke roll off of the belt. Obviously didn't smoke it because I've been driving it ever since, but I think it's getting to the end of its useful life. So uh, project at hand here is let's get that belt changed. All right, this is a mid-engine bike. Our belt housing is around here, clutch housing. Um, first thing we want to do is remove the seat. There are a number of these little push body pins, um, pop plastic rivets, I guess they call them. You're gonna wanna remove those. One of these little tools is helpful. Um, a, a flat blade screwdriver will also work. And I know I've said it before, but these things are so cheap for a kit of like 100 or 200 of them on on Amazon. Just do yourself a favor and buy a, an assortment of them because they do break quite often when you're pulling them out of the plastic like this. Briefly remove your fuel cap. A little bit of debris down in there. Remove this cover. Note the two rear screws are longer than the two in the front there. I'm gonna want to remove this panel. Looks like there's one, two, three, four pop rivets. Unplug your fuel line, fuel tank vent from the frame there. Actually, should probably do that a lot at some point. Pry that little red piece up. It's just a clip, you want to be careful. That slides down over and is a force fit so that this is kind of stuck on there. And then of course, that pops right off just like that.
two more 10 millimeter bolts on here. And then this. Well, not pop right out, will it? So I believe this is just on the T2 model. But... I believe this cargo storage thing has to come out too to get the tank out. You would not need to remove that on the T4, obviously, because they don't have it on the T4, but more so because your passenger seat leg room is going to be directly behind your fuel tank. And so you have enough room to get this fuel tank out without removing anything additional. All right, now we can get our fuel tank out and then we can get our clutch out. be a good time to clean up all your mud that you can't normally get out of here by pressure washing it Quite a bit of belt dust in there. No mud or anything, so that's good. All right, this one is uh, just regular thread. Regular thread. Got two washers. You want to remove those. Set those aside. And then this one is right hand thread. Washers, so you don't lose those and then we should be able to pull our clutches off simultaneously oh yeah there's a ton of belt dust in there Um, 
you know, it was still moving, so we'll keep this as a spare. I'm not gonna junk it. It's definitely, you know, without measuring, it's hard to tell, but there's a ton of belt dust in there, so it needs replaced. What I can do is blow that out with some hair. You're also gonna to wanna to clean the inside of your housing out pretty good um, with some brake clean and microfiber towel or whatever you got laying around, rag. It's probably better than what I'm using actually. spread your clutch a little bit you can add a couple 10 millimeter bolts in these holes here and you just want to tighten those evenly and that'll spread the clutch a little bit so your belt sits down rides down in a little lower because you can see right now it's sitting just a little proud of that clutch and that makes it a little bit harder to slide everything together. Nicely. So we should be able to slide everything right back on now. probably could do that maybe without I don't know now it's just getting the splines lined up and that looks pretty good Put washers and are not back on this one remembering that is right hand or left hand thread, whatever, not normal thread. And then this one is just normal. And then we wanna torque these. Now they do make a special tool to hold this primary um, while you torque it. And the torque spec is uh, 69 foot pounds, by the way. So, um, all I'm going to do is put my pry bar in there. And then we will hopefully torque it to 69 foot. So that's torqued, and then the torque on the rear is 100 foot pounds. Get those out of the way. Click, nice and tight. All right. Okay. is just reassembly guys so it's more involved than you know some manufacturers for sure but there's nothing difficult about it 
and you should be able to do it with pretty much what you have in your garage. So I'm gonna throw this back together and then uh, gonna go hit the trail. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this video helps some of you guys out.